So are you interested in an easy way to evaluate hops with the benefit of producing a six pack of an enjoyable beer? Well, I brewed two small batch hop samplers, one with Simcoe hops, the other with Lemon Drop. Well, stick around to learn more and see how they turned out. Well, let's get to it. Well, thanks for dropping by Cascades Homebrew. My name is Brent. So as part of my series about learning about hops, I brewed two small batch extract based hop samplers. In this case, I brewed one of them with Simcoe hops, the other with Lemon Drop hops. I'd love to take credit for the idea, but it was James and Steve over at Basic Brewing where I first learned about this from their podcasts and their videos on YouTube. So James put together a video with he and his son Drew, walks a little bit through the process of making a hop sampler and then evaluating. So you could just click off, watch that video instead, but maybe you want to stick around and see how I did it. So the overall recipe and process is pretty simple. That's kind of the idea, a simple way to evaluate hops. Now I apologize for my international viewers because this is kind of built around American sized packages of extract and hops. So the basic recipe is three quarter gallon or three quarts of water. Mix that with one pound of dry malt extract and you use one ounce of hops. I'm sure you could adopt a similar recipe to whatever package sizes are available to you. This is a simple no boil recipe. Basically you mix the extract in the water, you just bring it up to a boil, you add the hops, and then you steep the hops. In the basic brewing video that I mentioned, they use a 30 minute hop steep. Well, in some trials on basic brewing radio, they decided they liked the 10 minute hop steep the best. So that's what I did for this batch. So I've made several of these in the past. I always use one ounce of hops. It's worked out well for me. On basic brewing, they often mix up the amount of hops, usually a little less than that. And their goal is to get a common bitterness across the samplers that they're gonna do for that episode. So for high alpha acid hops, they'll lower the amount that they use. I found that I get a pretty good bitterness just using one ounce, even if they're higher alpha acid. Basic brewing often uses Pilsen light extract. In this case, I use the Breeze Pale Ale Malt, which is a little bit of a darker one. So the equipment needed for this batch is also very simple. So I've got this basic stainless steel three gallon kettle I picked up at Walmart. It may have been like 12 bucks, pretty cheap, pretty thin. It works well. Any pot that's a, a gallon, gallon and a half, probably be better. Anything a little bigger would work fine. The other piece of equipment I use is this little big mouth bubbler fermenter. It's a small batch. It tops out at about one and a half gallons, so it's great for a full one gallon of beer. In this case, since it's only a three quarter gallon, any kind of one gallon jug would work, or even just a small fermenter, say a small bucket. And then besides that, it's really just some basic kitchen utensils, maybe some basic brewing, and then equipment to bottle the beer. Well, all right, well, let's take a quick look at the process, and let's open those beers and see how they turned out. For such a basic ingredient, the topic of water for brewing can get confusing. For extract brewing, any good tasting water should work fine. That could be store purchased, distilled, RO, spring water. Here I'm using my straight up tap water. If your tap water is treated with chlorine or chloramine, like mine is, it's important to remove that before adding the extract. In the past, I filtered my tap water using a Brita pitcher filter, and that seemed to work fine. I recently purchased a pouch of powdered potassium metabisulfite. That's the same ingredient from Captain tablets, which can be used as well. I thought that the powder might be easy to measure for small batches. From what I could tell, I needed around 0.03 grams or three one hundredths, but I realized my scale does not really measure below about one tenth of a gram, so I had to eyeball the amount to use. With that out of the way, I add the three quarter gallons of treated water to the kettle. At this point, the water is just warm. I turn off the heat and add in the one pound or about 450 grams of dry malt extract. I'm using Brees Pale Ale Extract. Brees Pilsen Light or Golden Light will produce a lighter colored beer. Just make sure the heat is turned off until the extract is well mixed. If you're using an electric stove, remove the pot from the hot burner to avoid scorching. I measure out the one ounce or 28 grams of hops. This first batch is using Simcoe hops. Just as the mix comes up to a boil, I turn off the heat and add in the one ounce or 28 grams of Simcoe hops. I mix the hops in well and then cover up the pot for a 10 minute steep. At the end of the 10 minute steep, I give the hops another good mix, hoping to extract as much hop character as I can. 
Then it's time to cool the wort down to pitching temperatures. I find that these small batches cool off very fast. The first step is to use cool tap water to knock off the majority of the heat. Then replace the warm water with fresh cold tap water and add in some ice. After about 10 minutes, I'm ready to transfer into the fermenter. I transfer the wort into my little big mouth bubbler fermenter. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how well this strainer works to filter out the majority of the hop matter. Man, that one ounce of hop sure swelled up to quite a large mass. With the first batch done, let's do this again. Hopefully you're paying attention and ready for the quiz at the end of the video. The steps needed are to measure out and treat 3 quarter gallons of water, add it to the kettle, mix in 1 pound of dry malt extract, measure out 1 ounce of lemon drop hops, bring the mixture to a boil, add the 1 ounce of lemon drop hops, steep for 10 minutes, Chill the wort, starting with cold tap water, then switching over to using ice, and then transfer the chilled wort into the fermenter. With both batches chilled and in the fermenter, I measured out two and a half grams of yeast from a pack of US05. I sprinkled the yeast onto the surface of each batch. I then moved the fermenters to a lower level bathroom that stays relatively cool. By the following morning, fermentation was well underway. On day two, fermentation was really rocking. By day five, fermentation was slowing, but I still saw some signs of fermentation. That's typically what I expect from US05. About two or three days of fairly vigorous fermentation, followed by three or four days of slow fermentation. On day 19, I was able to fit in time to bottle these batches. I'm sure I could have bottled them faster, but my preference is to give bottled beers a little extra time in the fermenter to ensure that fermentation is complete and give a little extra time for yeast to settle out in the fermenter rather than in the bottle. I primed each bottle by adding a single 2.3 gram of sugar cube. In theory, this should give me about 2.6 volumes of CO2. These domino dots are convenient when bottling the 12 ounce bottles. Note that it seems like this size domino dot cubes has been discontinued and the boxes sold now that I see have larger 3.6 gram cubes. I then just filled each bottle from the fermenter using a bottling wand and then capped each bottle. I got six bottles out of one batch and seven out of the other. So I bottled these beers just about one month ago. These two bottles have been sitting in the fridge for about a week. Let's crack them open and see how they turned out. Look at the appearance on them. It's definitely a dark golden. This is one thing I find about extract, right? So this is a pale ale. So it's going to be something like a English pale ale, a Maris Otter typically. Usually extract ends up quite a bit darker, even though these were in no boil. So there was no boil to darken the extract. This was dry malt extract. The bags themselves have been around for maybe a year or so that I had, but dry malt extract seems to like it packaged as well. On the liquid malt extract, which can darken up. Got some heavy rain coming down. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out on the video and the sound, or if you're going to hear that. We go for aroma. Do we get good hop aroma on these ones? So overall, I'd say the hop aroma is a little bit on the light side. I definitely get hop aroma, and I get difference in hop character. I get a little bit more of kind of an earthy hop character on the lemon drop. I'm not getting a lot of lemon character. On the Simcoe one, I'm getting a little bit more of kind of a bright, fresh hop character. Again, I feel like the hop character on both of these is kind of muted. I mean, they weren't dry hopped. It was just hops added at steep. Let's go in for a taste. Do we get some unique taste? Do I get lemon drop hop? Do I get Simcoe hops? Okay. So as far as the flavor, definitely more dominated by this kind of underlying multi character. A little less of the hop character. And the bitterness on both of these, I think, is pretty appropriate, kind of like a pale ale level. So that's one thing I've learned. You can definitely get bitterness just from lated hop additions. You don't get as much as, say, a 60-minute boil addition. But with one ounce of hops in one gallon batch or a three-quarter gallon batch, you can get a good amount of bitterness just from a hop steep. The beers have quite a bit of haze to them. I think these are only the second bottles. I'd opened some before, and they were kind of hazy. That's why I put them in the fridge for a week, hoping they would drop clear a little bit. 
I'm not quite sure what to attribute that to. So what is my overall takeaway on these extract based beers? I feel like I've enjoyed them more in the past. I'm not quite sure what it is about this batch. Maybe using the pale ale malt extract was a mistake. Deadly turns out fairly dark orange color. I feel like there's a bit of an oxidation character in it. So one thing I didn't do, just trying to keep things simple, was say purge the headspace of the bottles. I've definitely done some experiments in the past where just that headspace in a hoppy beer can leave a lot of oxidation for bottle. There's this idea that the yeast will consume all the oxygen that's in the headspace of a bottle. I'm pretty positive that's not true. And you definitely get oxidation damage, especially with hoppy beers. I don't really notice in other beers, say like the Saisons or other Belgians that I bottle. But I think with hoppy beers, I probably should have purged the headspace. Well, let me grab a sample of that other Simcoe Pale Ale just to take a quick look for reference. I got kind of a thick head on that one. But there's the difference. This is the Pale Ale, all grain Pale Ale. This two row with some Crystal Malt and Simcoe. And this is the extract base hop sampler with Simcoe hops and Breeze Pale Ale extract. There's quite a difference in color. The all grain one is several weeks older. So you can see a little bit of the clarity, but it's definitely a lighter color. Definitely a much prettier looking beer. Now this beer was not dry hopped either. You definitely get a lot more of the Simcoe, kind of this fresh fruity. You definitely get some more unique hop flavors in this one. All right, there's some thunder. I don't know if you can hear that. So overall thoughts on the extract batch is just that there's a little too much of kind of a multi character and some of it may be oxidation. So I've been thinking about some other ways to improve these hop samplers to make them a little better. One would be using a lighter malt extract. I may use a little bit of sugar in there to lighten up the grain bill. I can make a full gallon with the one pound bag. Another thing I've done in the past with hop samplers is kind of split up the hops, boil some of them for 10 minutes, throw some of them at flame out and then throw some in for a dry hop. I feel like those ones had a little bit better hop character. So I might cycle back and see if I can brew a better extract based hop sampler. Ooh, I lost my power. So the power's back so we can finish up the video. Before we do that, let me jump in here for a second. Here's a picture of some hop samplers I made a few years ago. The one on the left was made with Breeze Pilsen Light Dry Malt Extract. The one on the right was made with the same Breeze Pale Ale Dry Malt Extract that I used to make the hop samplers we just looked at. There's definitely a noticeable difference in the color between these two malts. And I mentioned earlier in the video, I think I can make a better hop sampler with just a few tweaks. So hopefully I did just that. I have another pair of hop samplers fermenting right now. Among the changes, I also use dry Lutra yeast. I've never used Lutra before, so I'm curious how that works out. Well, be sure to check back in to see. This is just one video in a series of evaluating hops, looking at different ways and different methods. So I already put one out. We look at hop water. Is that a good way to evaluate hops? We did one where we brewed this simple Simcoe Pale Ale that turned out quite nice. That video is worth checking out. Well, I'll put a link to the playlist up. If you like this kind of stuff, if you like experimental stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And hopefully this information can help you build some great beer. Cheers.